I want it to be known that I'm a friend of God. You see, Joshua wanted what God wanted. God wanted Israel to be blessed. God wanted Israel to stand in that moment showing how that God could come against five kings. How can you win against five kings when you're just a so-so nation? Haven't really come to your fullness yet. How can you win when you're not that much a material, military genius and the things about you are not that great? How can you win? You can win if God wants you to. If God desires for you to. Go back and find out what God wants. Too much of our time we're trying to do something that God is not interested in. We're trying to talk God into doing something that he's not a part of. And we think simply because we want more people that God is going to say, fine. But why do you want more people? Why do you want success in marriage? Why do you want success in business? Why do you want success in the church? That he might get all the praise so that his will could be done. So that he could look with joy. That he could be satisfied. I want to do thy will, O oh God. I want to do what you want. Joshua was wanting what God wanted and he stood in that moment after he prayed to God and he said son you stand still oh I would have liked to heard him say that I would have got Holy Ghost goosebumps because in that moment I would have seen a man who had come closer to God than most men come in his spirit and his attitude he knew that there was nothing that was going to hinder him there was nothing that was going to challenge him. He just talked to God and God gave him permission in his spirit. And he looked at the sun and he said, stand still. Oh, hallelujah. Moon, stay right where you're at. And what did God do? God honored his cry. God honored that man. In that moment, he had success. Oh, listen, this success we're talking about is not the success of carnality. It's not the success of manipulation. It's not the success of playing games. It's the success of knowing that you are a part of God's purpose. And you can say to the universe, you've got to behave. You can say to the storm, you've got to stop. You can say to the waves, no more. You can say to the trouble around about you, it's time out. You're not going to keep on the way you're going. Cities can be changed. Lives can be transformed. Cities can be made birth again by the grace of God. When there's a people who want what God wants. Wanting what God wants. We're on the edge of getting gambling in the city. It's amazing how many saints want it. In the heart of hearts, it's amazing how many saints want it. It's amazing how many churches want it. They think it's something that's going to add to the feeling of the city. Give us a few jobs. They look at it as though it was is a plus. And I'm not even going to speak about it because it doesn't bother me. If Detroit deserves gambling, it will get gambling. If the church deserves gambling, that's what it's going to have. It's what we deserve. And God will give grace in the middle of it. I, I, I don't think we have to fight all these battles. There are times when we just have to be able to be taught through situations. But I want to tell you what God has for us is not that which the world has. And if we fall in love with the world, we're not going to get the blessings of the Lord. Friendship with the world is a work that puts a wedge between us and God. But if we turn to God with all our heart, we will know that we're right with God because we become godly. 
And godly is not just morally correct, as well important that is, but godly is that power to stand and say a difference is coming, a change is going to be, it's not going to go on this way because I'm going to say something in this moment with the authority of God and it's going to make a difference. And I know what spirit I come in because I traveled all night. I know what spirit I come in because I got a can't quit.